The strangely puritanical idea of desexualizing sex in America has dug itself deep into the American psyche. Audiences are literally taken out of the realm of day-to-day -day function while being told that what is natural to every human being is strictly implicit, while violence, as well as sometimes sexual violence, is seen as a hero in modern-day media. Such an ideology can give many the wrong idea about sex, because all that they are shown are either snippets of a true love scene, but much more violent sex scenes and misconduct in R-rated movies, while more sensual and serious encounters are tucked away into the NC-17 rating. As sex and nudity is portrayed in the American culture as an unsettling subject, violence in today's media is glorified, even by six- and seven-year-old children. With such a consensus, many wonder why America's media perception is not flipped, why Americans should be much more comfortable discussing and seeing pleasure in the media than pain. This podcast is entitled The Taboo, a subject of sex and nudity in the American ethos. Since the late 1960s, the rating system of the Motion Picture Association of America's Division of Classification and Rating Administration has injected itself into the film industry to rate films to protect children from seeing undesirable pictures. The MPAA has been involved in providing a consensus to completely control the information in the media and own the access to America's cultural evolution. 95% of the entertainment industry is owned by only five major corporations, which of course proves to be a huge monopoly. The arbitrary system of rating films is necessary for any motion picture to be released in public theaters and air on television. According to a former CARA rater in the article Parental Guidance, a content analysis of MPAA motion picture rating justifications from 1993 to 2005 by Richard Potts, to become a rater for CARA, the only specifications an individual must have is parenting experience, intellectual maturity, and to be able to put themselves into the role of most American parents. What is strange about that is, CARA is categorized by a rating board of individuals that is strictly classified to the public. Many ask, why should the American people trust such a secret organization that functions almost like the federally run organizations like the CIA or NSA that infers what the average American's best interests are in dictating what they can see and cannot see. No other country in the world has seen a concealed motion picture rating organization and system such like this. Although a majority of parents applaud the MPAA rating system, which provides a full description of the amount of nudity, sexual content, violence, and language in the film, filmmakers find the rating system as a fascist entity to their work of portraying reality in their films. Depicting pleasure has been found to be quite unnerving to American audiences, as well as a red flag for a NC-17 rating, meaning no children under 17 are allowed to see it. Not only does the NC-17 rating keep all children from viewing the movie in public, it also restricts where the film can be advertised, shown, and sold, making the MPAA more like a censor than a helpful guide to American entertainment quality and subject matter. The interesting part about these contrasting principles is that according to Ron Leon's article entitled Rated Sex, an analysis of the MPAA's use of the R and NC-17 ratings, he quotes, The MPAA allows children much easier access to violent content, which is more harmful to them than sexual content, concluding that exposure to sexual content alone, even graphic depictions, does not facilitate aggression, while the effects of violence on antisocial behavior saw a casual link between various types of violent portrayals and a range of aggressive and antisocial behaviors among children and young adults. It has also been found that more sexual content than violent content was edited out of the R-rated versions of films. Rarely did violence content make a film too intense for the R-rating category. Sexual content, on the other hand, was often a major offender. Such findings show how the MPAA manipulates Americans by controlling what they can and cannot see, love, and only seem to know about. 
for the fear that sex would dissolve social bonds more than violence will or has in America, eventually making the conclusion that there is a great amount of denial of pleasure for both men and women in American media culture. Films such as Mary Heron's American Psycho and Sam Taylor Johnson's Fifty Shades of Grey both expose large aspects of sadism through the characters, yet both films are rated R by the MPAA, while more serious films such as Blue is the Warmest Color get rated NC-17 because of their extreme sexual content. American Psycho shows animal cruelty and sexual violence to the extreme. Fifty Shades of Grey shows another very successful businessman who is an aggressive, jealous, and controlling man. Both films have quite a parallel, as they both show sexual violence, though at somewhat opposite ends of the spectrum. Patrick Bateman is a more literal representation of who Christian Grey really is, another corporate psychopath. On the other hand, in Blue is the Warmest Color, the main character, Adele, is exploring her sexuality and falls in love with another woman, Emma. The film does show their sexual acts, but in a much more realistic and sensual way. Although this is a French film, and many French films do get a bad rap in the United States in the first place, many wonder why. Why are Americans so afraid of seeing real-life situations played out in their entertainment? Although homosexuality in American media culture does not have a very good representation, it is getting better. Anyone could argue that they would rather watch a psychopath than two women together in a film, but which is more likely to happen in any ordinary person's life? American Psycho and Fifty Shades of Grey expose one's fantasies and a very small of the world's population's reality, while Blue is the Warmest Color illustrates every aspect of a relationship, even the awful, ugly cry bits. In American cinema, Films that are rated NC-17, as explained before, have a more content-based, yet more serious tone that they take to sexuality and nudity as compared to R-rated films, which at times can be serious and romantic as well, but also tend to be more comedic depictions of such content. Most films, especially comedic films, are written by men, therefore making sex and nudity depicted in the male perspective, which leaves a problem for women. With more and more female directors and writers making their way into mainstream media, women are starting to be portrayed in a totally new way in front of the camera. Due to such an upsurge of filmmakers, men and women who portray their characters experiencing pleasure from a female or new perspective seem to make their viewers a little nervous. The MPAA is not fond of such unfamiliarity and has repetitively censored such content to NC-17, literally killing a quality story because it does not fit the American agenda of the MPAA rating system. Not to mention, the MPAA does not have a strict set of rules or guidelines to follow when rating films. The only rules that are followed to rate any motion picture are the morals of the raters themselves. An original MPAA member was one of the first to claim that much of the classification of movies was actually done with an eye to what disturbs adults. G-rated or suitable for general audiences were not necessarily those most suitable for children. They were the ones the board considered least likely to offend adults. An example of how the MPAA rated and changed films would be the original cut of Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. It was rated X or NC-17 at the time. Digitally edited people, only in the American release, were masked into the film's party scene to cover its overt sexuality. Although Kubrick died shortly after handing in his final edited copy, controversy arose criticizing the digital altering of such a highly renowned auteur's work to fit the American agenda. Eyes Wide Shut also has a very interesting dynamic between the main character, Bill, and his wife, Alice, as she explains to him one night about her attraction to a naval officer. This image haunts Bill as he envisions his wife's infidelities as cheap pornography, whereas his own experimentation remains on the level of art. Yet in American Pie, which is rated R, the main character can strangely pleasure himself with an apple pie, and many of those same Americans who cannot handle a more conveying scene as mentioned before find the pie scene funny and not disturbing whatsoever. 
Why must an existential art film be altered to cover a tiny part of a sexual act, be rated NC-17, when the viewer probably already knows what is going on under the covered part anyway, and a raunchy comedy allowed the viewer to see things they have never seen before get an R rating? Time and time again, Filmmakers are seeing their films shut down from being made into a big public motion picture because it depicts more serious romantic and realistic scenes. It is unfair that it is censored like that just because it is a more accurate and visceral experience for the viewer compared to how it is viewed in an R-rated, less offensive, and sometimes comical way. Through the influence of the MPAA and American Parents Abroad, their opinions have consistently upheld the beliefs of a non-modern, puritanical America, that sex and nudity is something that does seem to come from the conservative, Christian side of America. The mentality that affection and pleasure should be hidden and violence should be glorified because to popular consensus, it is a man's God-given right to bear arms. It is almost a schizophrenic paradox on how America views such topics. Throughout Western history, sex and nudity has been seen as nothing out of the ordinary. In Europe today, the belief is still the same. Why has America evolved into such a faint-hearted society in respect to such media and content? In Europe, there is an openness about sex and nudity, and there is generally no need for a teen to revolt in such a way against his or her parents because he or she has already been educated by his or her parents and is very comfortable conversing about the matters. However, in the United States, teen pregnancy rates, though slowing, are the highest in the world, and many parents are uncomfortable teaching their children about sex, while also protesting the teaching of sex education in their children's schools because they feel that it is too graphic or not taught in the way that they think it should be. The teenage birth rate in the United States is 26.5 pregnancies per 1,000 women that are less than 18 years old. In Europe, the average teenage birth rate is four times less than in the United States. Whether it be sex and nudity on cell phones, computers, on the news, TV shows, or films, Americans seemingly grab for their Bibles and shake their heads, but continue to be the leader in teenage pregnancies and not to mention pornographic productions and distribution. There is a very big difference between being sexually active and sexually open. The MPAA and American parents continually argue that sex and nudity as depicted in the media as undesirable for the child's eye because premature exposure to sexual content may very well lead to early and high-risk sex, love addictions, and sexual violence. This again comes back to the puritanical way of thinking. The Puritans thought of sex as a sacred duty of marriage, not to be appreciated or discussed. They also felt that the action of depicting sex creates temptation, making them consumed in sexual thoughts, therefore the innocence of children must be protected. According to Joseph Cramp in his article, Symbolic Loss in American Adolescence, Mourning in Teenage Cinema, he explains that, quote, parental and cultural guidance always have the last word in exhorting youth down their respective paths, for good or ill." Unquote. Parents are generally acknowledged as the first sexuality educators of their children. The parent's role as educator starts the day their child is born in subtle ways through the implicit and explicit expectations about gender properties and roles. Subsequent and ongoing communication about relationships, love, and affection, and other relevant issues follow. Although, all too soon, children become active agents in this process, and parents inevitably find themselves facing challenging and often very direct questions from toddlers, preschoolers, and grade schoolers. Through growing up in the modern age, Children and teenagers have progressively lost their independence and will because they are so oppressed by the society around them. It would be a natural response to revolt. The conclusion is a vicious story and cycle where the values of compliance and obedience are seized by the lawmakers and the children of this society are held accountable toward.
It is a very large percentage of our population that believes in the strict censoring of our films, and that percentage just so happens to be raiders for the MPAA. They believe that it is their civic duty to hide certain aspects of humanity from their children. But what is really more important is educating the youth so that they have a better understanding earlier in life, so that they can come to their own conclusion. In his article, Cramp also explains Peter Holman's theory of symbolic loss, which is defined as, quote, the loss of cherished and social shared historical ideals and symbols, followed by a struggle to replace them with a new form of thinking, unquote. Ultimately, Holman is saying that we become what we see. As we move into the 21st century, sensual affection is being portrayed in a more mature and realistic way, but if we constantly see violent acts of love in our media, it will become the social norm, if it hasn't already. But perhaps if we let go of the strong conservative side, just a little perhaps, we will be enlightened to find that what we see and what we become in light of that is really not that bad. American teens and young adults have become very confused and vulnerable due to the underexposure of sexuality and human normality in American media. Millennials are lacking the makeup of their own identity as a human being, especially in an emotional sense, but also in a faithful sense, because they have not been educated of the values that are essential to the makeup of every human being's mind and soul. Many films cause their viewers to become attached to them, whether it be the beautiful original soundtrack or visual metaphors showing them that they can overcome their adversities. The beauty that the viewer sees in the film allows them to not only reflect on the film, but on themselves, their society around them, and how they function from day to day in that culture. But once one is deprived of such beauty and connection to transform their viewing experience into their real lives, according to Cramp, quote, the strength of American democracy wilts and the private horrors of the young individuals living in America only grows worse, 